Um, so I want to thank you all for coming and I want to thank all the ACS people here and all the uh, librarians who've been here through the day. I think this has been a great event and a great way to showcase um, the interaction between university, ACS, and um, the librarians. So when Sarah first started talking to me about this session, um, the name was going to be Alternative Careers in Chemistry, and I had just been to a mentoring workshop for faculty on helping students go from being a graduate student to having a career. And one of the things they talked about was that um, the reality is that an academic career is the alternative. Most people with a PhD are going to go into some career that's not an academic career. And so Sarah finally agreed <laughs> to just call this a careers in chemistry. Um, but the caveat then was that I had to talk. Um, <laughs> and so I said, well, okay, I think mostly students kind of know what we do. Um, but probably the reality is you probably see us at our most stressful of the job, you know, solving problems, fixing this problem, getting ready to submit a grant. Um, so I guess what I'd kind of like to do, and who knows if I'll be successful, is to give you maybe more of an overview of what it's like to be a professor and maybe give you um, some sense of the advantages and um, the, the good things ab about a job in, in academics. So my career path, um, I re I'm from Nebraska, so to end up in uh, California is a bit of a jump. Um, but beyond that, I've lived all across the country also. So I have a degree in food science um, from Nebraska, and I have a mas master's degree from here at UC Davis. But after that, I decided I wanted to get some work experience for a while. So in addition to some undergraduate work experience, which kind of got me excited about science and, and research, um, after I finished my master's degree, I went back to Nebraska and I worked um, at two different places. I worked um, at an Epley Cancer Institute as an analytical chemist and then at a pharmaceutical contract testing lab as an analytical chemist. When I did my master's degree, that's sort of when I really started to get excited about analytical chemistry and started to realize, hey, I, I really like working with uh, chromatography equipment, um, learning how instruments work, and using them to um, obtain new knowledge. So after a couple years working, um, I started to realize that, well, I think what I really do want is to get a PhD. I want to be able to be the one to um, direct that research and be making the decisions. So I actually started my degree at Cornell, um, so that was one of the moves across the country. Um, but I then finished my degree here at UC Davis, so that was another move across the country in the middle of my PhD. Um, so I think one thing I want to say to you is be open to opportunities as they come up. Um, I think I'm an example of that as um, educational and job opportunities have come open to me. I've been willing to move and my, my family's been willing to move and that's been a, a fantastic um, experience for me. It gives you new horizons, new challenges, new opportunities that help you to grow. So I did my um, degree then here in um, the agricultural and environmental chemistry um, graduate group which is a um, chemistry based degree that um, solves problems in food science or environmental chemistry or environmental toxicology. So my interest was still analytical chemistry, but I was very interested in flavor chemistry. And I had actually done some biological chemistry, but looking at, at volatile compounds um, through both my master's and my PhD. So I was um, very interested in flavor chemistry. And so my first job after my PhD was actually as a flavor chemist, analytical chemist at Campbell Soup Company. So there was another move, California back to New Jersey. Um, I was at Campbell Soup Company for about a year and the position here at UC Davis um, came open and um, I took uh, the position here at, at Davis about 15 years ago. And so now I'm in the Department of Viticulture and Enology doing flavor chemistry, using analytical chemistry to understand um, flavor composition of foods and beverages. So why did I get into academics? As you can see, I have experience in the industry, um, in all different kinds of industries actually, in contract testing labs and in food industry, um, and in more of an academic research type setting, not as a professor. Um, so to me, um, academics was a very appealing opportunity 
because I did enjoy teaching and I did enjoy the research. Um, as, a grad, as a graduate student, I had an opportunity to TA and I enjoyed that interaction with the students. Um, and I actually did really like the research and being in the lab. Um, also very important to me, particularly as once I finished my PhD, I really started to realize this um, when I was at Campbell Soup Company, was that I really wanted to be able to determine my own research path a little bit more. When I was at Campbell's, it was, even though I had a PhD and I was you know, doing uh, research at Campbell's, it was still someone else kind of telling me, you do this, you do this. And you know, sometimes they were wanting me to do things that didn't necessarily make sense to me. Um, so as an academic, um, I can sort of more determine my own research path. Now that's with a caveat. I have to be able to get that research funded some way. And so still, you know, somebody else is still going to be telling me what I can or can't do to some extent, um, but I still can't, can direct that. And one of the biggest things, and not every um, industry or company is like this, um, but I really didn't want to have to move with the job every time I wanted to advance. And this was, at the time I was in the industry, this was the way the food industry was. If you wanted to move up, you were going to have to move to the next company to get that um, advancement. And I really, that wasn't for me. I didn't want to have that kind of profess, um, pr um, pressure on myself and my family. Whereas here now, once I have tenure, I can choose. Am I going to stay here or, or move on? So a typical day in the life of a professor, there isn't one. <laughs> Every day is different. Um, but again, most of you probably can see and, and know what we do. Um, basically, my job title is, consists of teaching, research, service, and outreach. And so among each of those activities, um, I'm going to be doing lots of things that can fit under one of those headings. Teaching is the obvious thing. Um, preparing and giving lectures and helping with uh, teaching laboratories. Um, creating and grading problem sets, exams, and papers. So there's a lot of outside of class time preparing, but then there's also the in-class time where I'm actually there working with and, and meeting with the students. Um, then in addition to that, some of the things that you might not see unless you yourself are a TA, um, spending a lot of time coordinating the things that happen with teaching assistants and the staff. So that when a student comes into the lab, we've already figured out sort of the workflow of how the lab's going um, to happen. So we have plan all of that ahead of time. And then also a big part um, is planning for the future. Um, obviously, once things start to work well in a lab or a class, you kind of do the same thing over. But we're always um, looking in the literature, taking examples from our own research or our colleagues' research and saying, oh, can I now take that and put that into my lecture or my lab class and, and use that um, um, in a teaching uh, opportunity. Uh, research, that's what you as graduate students are mostly helping me to do. Um, so my job is to help you as a graduate student um, to sort of make it through all those steps of, of getting a research project done and publishing, which is what we've been talking about today. Um, part of that process then is, get, is writing grants so that we can help to fund students. Um, if you have a grant, you're going to have to write reports. And so oftentimes when your major professor comes to you and says, I need some data um, because the granting agency needs an update, that is very, very important to the granting agency to ensure that you will get funding through the next grant cycle. So the reports can be as an important part of, of the process as the actual writing the grant to get the money. Once um, you have a, a, a project done, so to speak, uh, then you're working on writing the papers. We talked about that a lot this morning. Um, as a professor, um, I'm helping students to solve problems when their research isn't going well. Um, that's probably what a majority of the time I spend doing is trying to figure out, well, why didn't that experiment work? What can we do next? What do we have to do to make sure this instrument's working? Um, so solving problems, um, whether they're technical problems or, or larger problems of rethinking. Maybe, maybe we have the wrong approach here and we need to do something a little bit differently. Uh, reading literature, uh, participating in scientific meetings, those are all things that we do to um, help inform the research. Um, then some of the things, again, as, as students that you might not see that we're always doing, um, service activities, things um, 
to uh, provide service to our departments or to our campus um, or to our professional societies such as the American Chemical Society. Um, one of the things we do to provide service um, to the uh, scientific community is to be a peer reviewer and again we've heard, we've heard about that earlier today. Um, organizing symposia and workshops is another thing that, that we do to um, again provide service um, to our community but then at the same time we, we gain a lot from that too because we meet the, the players in the field and we get to help again I think as Sarah said help to guide where some of the, the knowledge is going and where some of the new, um, the new uh, science is going. Outreach, um, we, in my department particularly, um, some departments will have different types of industry or other types of stakeholders that they uh, interact with, but um, in my department we do work uh, with the wine and, and grape growing um, industry, so uh, we do hold workshops and seminars with, with um, people in the industry, we meet with them. Um, a certain percentage of the work that I do is, is informed by trying to help solve problems for, for that industry. So what are the rewards of a job in academia? Well, for me, one of the biggest things is um, that I'm always learning something new, and that's, that's exciting. Um, every day there's a new um, result in the laboratory, or um, I read a new paper, or I go to a, a seminar and I, I learn something new. Um, solving problems, that's challenging, but that's also, for me, rewarding. It's like putting a puzzle together and at the end saying, oh, I did it. I figured out what the problem was and now we can make it work. Um, and helping students to be a part of creating that new knowledge. Um, I think, you know, make, be, saying that you can be a part of that process that um, is creating the knowledge that's cre um, uh, helping to uh, inform industries or helping to give knowledge um, to teach in classes, that's, that's a very um, exciting thing to be a part of. Meeting new people, every year there's a new class of students that come in, a new class of people that we get to meet, um, and, and that's a lot of fun. Um, so part of that then is helping to give that next generation of students, the scientists in my uh, department, winemakers, a start, and helping to guide them and, and get them going in their careers. Um, so again, freedom, that's one of the things that got me into um, being in academics and it's still one of the things that I appreciate. Um, I can chart my own path, more or less. Again, the university has some restrictions. I have to do, you know, I have to go to that meeting even though I don't want to and um, I, I can't, you know, I do have to get funding and be able to do things to satisfy certain stakeholders. But for the most part, I can choose the kinds of projects I want to work on. And um, another thing for me, um, I have a family and the flexibility has been very, very nice. I can leave in the afternoon if I need to, to go help at my son's class or to pick him up after school. Um, uh, when my son was very little, I was able to work at home um, some days a week. Um, I was able to um, do a lot of things when he was little that I really wouldn't have been able to do when I was in industry. And, and I know I wouldn't have been able to do because I had just come from industry, so I knew, I know what the struggle would have been to do those kinds of things. So um, there is a lot of flexibility um, to um, chart my own path as well as chart my own time each day. So resources, um, these are resources I think no matter what fields you want to get into. I don't actually know if there's any resources that are going to target you to an academic career, um, but you're here, so take advantage of the professors. I think this is what Sarah said too. Be fearless about coming up to us. I know, like I said, where you, you see us at our most stressful sometime, and so it's kind of maybe intimidating to come up and say, hey, can you help me out? Give me some advice here. But, but really, that's what we're here for. So, you know, just remind us of that, and um, that's that's why we're here, to help you, um, you know, get, get through some of these questions that you might have. And I think it gives you multiple perspectives. I think people are going to be very honest with you and say, yeah, that's something that, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there, so go for it. Um, or the alternatives. Um, go to conferences in your discipline. Um, American Chemical Society conferences are one of the ones that I go to probably the most frequently. Um, there are some wine industry or some wine uh, related conferences also that I go to. Um, be a teaching assistant. 
Um, I, like I said, I enjoyed being a teaching assistant. Um, I will tell you that there is nothing like being a professor that first year you're a professor. Um, being a teaching assistant can never prepare you for the, all of the things that you're going to have to do as a professor. But it at least gives you an idea and informs you of do you like working with people and helping them um, to answer their questions. Um, uh, and volunteer or work in a laboratory. Most of you are graduate students and so you probably are already working in a laboratory. But if you're an undergraduate student and you're trying to think about, well, what kind of a career path do I want to do, get in a lab now and um, try to figure it out. And that, that gives you all of these upper, other opportunities. It gives you an opportunity to know the faculty, to know other students that you can talk to. And if you're lucky and get on a project, maybe they'll send you also to a meeting and you can start um, networking and lear learning that way. Uh, so one of the other questions then I was asked to address was ACS membership and how that's uh, helped me. Um, it's uh, been very beneficial to me. It gives me access to peer-reviewed journals, um, and which I can actually access here on campus. So as long as I'm here on campus, that's maybe not the hugest benefit to me. Um, but going through VPN is sometimes kind of a hassle, so it's nicer if I can go in on my own. But for me, one of the nicest things is getting CNE news. I still get the paper copy. I still take that home, and I still leap through it. And that's a great way for me to just kind of catch up on lots of areas of chemistry and to spark my interest in other areas that I wouldn't necessarily read about in my day-to-day -day work. Um, and then going to media, ACS meetings and ACS symposia, those are very important for um, getting research updates. Um, as well as for networking and, and meeting new people as well as um, old colleagues. So that's all I have to say and thank you.